You know, we think about this being the 200th anniversary of the War of 1812. I'm so pleased that our relationship with the, uh, our friends across the border are way better than it was way back then. <laughs> but I like the way that Prime Minister Harper put it best, that over the course of human history, you'd be hard pressed to find two nations whose interests are as well aligned, and you consider socially or culturally or economically, that two nations as close as the United States and Canada. And this project itself, and the Blue Water Bridge before it, proof of that. That our transportation fund right now cannot handle the plaza construction and the connection of I-75 to a new bridge. So the fact that the private sector pays for the new bridge, it might be a surprise to you because the commercials don't say that. I will say incidentally though, Roy, there is one true thing on those commercials where it says paid for by the bottom. <laughs> so when you consider though that the private sector will competitively bid for the, for the project, and they will design, construct, finance, and operate the bridge. And the Canadians have graciously agreed to guarantee that performance. It still will cost upwards of about a half a billion dollars to connect the Michigan roadway to the bridge, include, when you include a, um, a modern uh, plaza, customs plaza area. Now, under the previous administration and since reaffirmed to our administration, the Canadians have agreed to cover that cost and wait as long as it takes for tolls to pay them back. The question is, well, what if the tolls don't pay them back? What if it's not enough? Guess what, folks? That's not our problem. That's a risk that the Canadian government is taking on. And it's a remarkable statement of confidence in the need for this crossing. And it's also a remarkable statement of confidence in the integrated nature and the future of that integrated nature of our two economies. So when we consider that our number one objective is to make an environment conducive to job growth in the state of Michigan, and we know that creating an environment around the ones that are already here is the best way to do that. We know that fixing problems associated with exporting to the world is tops on that list. And that's why we've so aggressively moved forward on solving these transportation issues that go beyond, by the way, just the bridge that we uh, is the subject of the conversation that I've had with you here so far. Transportation issues all across the state of Michigan and thinking really long term about the way that we pay for our roads and bridges here in this state. But we need to be very deliberate and we need to be very uh, serious about defeating efforts such as Proposal 6 that put in jeopardy all bridge projects across the entire state. The Secretary of State who is charged with the responsibility of deciding what words do we take out of the constitutional amendment and condense down to just 100 words for the ballot that you will vote on. Saw fit to take out the definition of international bridges or tunnels. The reason they saw fit to take out a definition, you normally wouldn't have a definition as part of the 100 words is because the definition has an enormous, an enormous error in it. And that is it defines international bridges or tunnels as any bridge or tunnel not open to motor vehicle traffic as of January 1st, 2012. So not only does it have the audacity to try and make it retroactive, which isn't really legal, by the way. But it also defined international bridge as any bridge. And so you'll see when you vote on it, they decided 
with limited space and limited words, you just gotta know, folks, that this is the way that international bridges or tunnel is defined. Please understand this before you vote on this, that this was an error. They spent, a, they spent almost $20 million so far on this, and they couldn't even get the definition right. You'd think they'd have better lawyers than that. They're very litigious people, and that's what this is really about. They're trying to buy a couple more years of lawsuits because every year that they can prevent the expansion of trade opportunities between our two nations is a year that they can maximize the amount of traffic that has to flow over their bridge, which represents the biggest bottleneck in the entire Pan-American freeway system. What it takes to get from I-75 to the 401 in Canada is absurd. For those who have to travel it and rely on going back and forth at that location, it is an insufferable situation that makes us uncompetitive. So when we think long term about removing obstacles, creating opportunity, creating an environment for growth, that we know that expansive transportation access, communication access between our two nations will provide us with the brightest future. And so whether we're talking about an extra lane right over here so that you can have a smart lane that doesn't get backed up by you know three or four trucks and all of a sudden you can't get through quickly. Projects as relatively small as that to projects as relatively big as a brand new international crossing and connecting the rail systems to the surface transportation, to our international airports, to our seaports that have access to the deep water, or access to the Canadian ports that have way more capacity to get our goods out in a timely fashion than most US ports have today. This is where our opportunity lies, folks. And so you put this together, that means that you understand the nature of the relationship between these two friends, that you understand the importance of our economic reliance on each other. And we being their biggest customer, they being our biggest customer. The work that you do will make a difference for 218,000 Michiganders. We have jobs today that rely on trade with Canada. That's good and noble work, and I wanna thank you for being a part of it. Now, before I, uh, I sit down, I just wanna point out a couple, of, uh, a couple of folks too. Howard Walker, Senator Howard Walker is right over here. He's your senator from the area. And Dave Nyberg, who's our, um, our uh, Northern Michigan representative for the executive office for Governor Snyder's office as well, if you wanna maybe raise your hand. I want to encourage you to reach out. This was just a quick four and a half hour drive for me. So it was uh, a pleasure to, uh, to join you. You know, it is, it's, it's kind of nice. Uh, my heritage runs through the UP and uh, on my dad's side. The, uh, in fact, my aunt Eleanor kept a, a house. Now, it wasn't down south like here. It was in the Keweenaw Peninsula. And, um, and so we go through uh, Houghton up to Calumet and that's where um, a uh, a Swedish man met a Finnish girl, um, came over to, uh, to work the copper mines, and uh, those were my great-grandparents. And um, so my grandmother being born there, the family kept a house there for a long time. It's been our, uh, every 4th of July and the weeks right around 4th of July there in Calumet, and uh, look, look upon it very, very favorably. And so it's really a pleasure every time I have an opportunity to come through here and, and just see the remarkable things that are happening west to east here in the, um, in the Upper Peninsula. I just a couple months ago and made my way from Menominee to here. And um, I, I will say that the map does not do justice to the vastness of the um, Upper Peninsula. But, I, but it, was, it was really remarkable though to see all of the things that were, that were happening that, and happening quietly. And I, I just, I came away from that thinking that this really needs to be celebrated, the things that are happening here. The, uh, from manufacturing to natural resources to tourism, that these are all three huge opportunities for this region. And so we're focusing in on, 
uh, on renewable resources such as uh, lumber and timber, but then also um, uh, and, and some energy opportunities and, and the resurgence of uh, mining opportunities as well and considering how we might change our system in Michigan to uh, better accommodate the present and the future um, before and after mining operations are here, but then um, to, uh, to consider the exciting uh, manufacturing that's happening. I was really quite impressed to see the diversity of uh, the manufacturing activities that are already happening and what the real uh, future opportunities are if we can if we can align our education system with the demands of the economy and that's really the next big task and think about where this administration is going to spend the majority of our time next year it's very clear that education policy is is that next uh, big step on creating an environment conducive to job growth to make sure that when people go through our education system at the end of the day they have skills that are relevant to what the economy is demanding today and tomorrow. Thank you all for being a part of it.